What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another transfer daily video for you guys today. In this video, we're going to be talking about Kai Havertz and this announcement was meant to happen days ago and it still hasn't happened. We got given a deadline of August the 28th. It is now big September the 1st and it still hasn't been announced. So we're going to talk about why it hasn't been announced, what's been holding this deal back over the last few days and weeks. We're also going to talk about the goalkeeping situation and news that Potentially Kepa could be staying and Kepa could be getting a second chance to prove himself at Chelsea So we're going to discuss that as well And we're also going to talk about N'Golo Kante and rumours linking him with Inter Milan and a reunion with Antonio Conte So we're going to talk about all these topics in this video today But before I start this video, if you guys haven't done so already I want you to smash that subscribe button Press that like button as well and press the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever any new content comes on this channel. I'm going to try and keep it to daily content. I'll try to do a double upload whenever Chelsea do a madness like they did last week. But this week, I will be real, it's looking like a very slow week, especially with... Uh, what's happening the international break which we're also going to delve into in this video as well so i might try and do a couple live streams get a couple q and a's going with a couple guys that i've spoken to as well maybe neil maybe saeed i don't know probably get lawrence on as well because we've been we've been meaning to do a video together for a while also check out his new channel if, if you haven't done so already i'll leave a link to that in the description below as well but yeah let's go straight into the first talking point we'll start with kepa and Chelsea are still chasing Edouard Mendy with a second bid of around 18 million euros submitted by the club over the last few days. Oh, that was disgusting, but we move. And the club hasn't been that active on trying to find a new goalkeeper as they've been focusing more on defensive reinforcements and getting our new attacking as well. Also, the Kai Havertz deal, which we're going to go into later as well. That's taking ages as well. And I think as the transfer window has continued to progress, it's looking more and more likely that Kepa is going to get that second chance. If we were looking at this towards the back end of last season, it looked like Kepa was out the door and he was finished. He didn't start the last game of the Premier League season against Wolves. He was dropped for the FA Cup final as well against Arsenal. For a £70 million signing, you'd be expecting him to be starting those two games, the two biggest games of our season at that point. And he didn't. And... It's not to blame Frank Lampard. I mean, there's a reason why Kepa didn't start. Kepa had an awful 1920 season. And coming from someone who tried to defend him for the most part of the season, it was hard. It was so hard. The guy has one of the worst save percentages in domestically and in Europe as well. And his stats overall, if you take a look at them, it shows a significant in decline in his ability over the last few seasons, even back to the athletic Bill Bilbao days. And it's a shame because 1819 Kepa had so much potential and there was promise in that keeper as well. Wasn't perfect, I will say that. He looked like a bit better than first season De Gea and a lot better penalty saving skills as well. If you remember Spurs in the semi-final, Frankfurt in the semi-final as well. That saved the first one where he just dropped down to one knee and caught the ball in mid shot in mid shot. That was that had the potential to be one of those iconic shots. But with the way Kepa's career has regressed at Chelsea since then, it's looked like he was coming out of the door. And I will say, Edouard Mendy, regardless of what happens with Kepa, should still be signed. I think competition is going to be good regardless. And I don't think we're going to go for a big marquee name in goal because we just don't have the resources for that. We're not pissing money out or anything like that. It's not that sort of case. We've been talking about a sell to buy for weeks, even though we haven't sold anyone and bought anyone, which kind of takes away from that point but I still think that we should be going for a new goalkeeper I think I know Kepa has said he's kind of at a u-turn now and is saying that he wants to stay and fight for his place I do think the wages play a little bit of a part in this I think he's one of the higher paid players in the squad second highest paid player in the squad before the new signings don't quote me on that but I think that's the case so he is going to be around for another season at the least I don't mind, I just want to see him have competition, serious competition as well, not Willy Caballero. Because there is a good goalkeeper there, and I think it was a serious confidence problem that really pressed on him. You also have to take into account the defensive organisation was just an absolute joke the entire season. And however bad Kepa was, the defence didn't help him, and the defence left him in a lot of bad situations as well. But it goes hand in hand, because Kepa's performances were poor as well. 
I do think confidence has a lot to play over. He is the most expensive goalkeeper in the world, which is also because we got bent over a barrel by Atletico Madrid. No, by Athletic Bilbao. Because Thibaut Courtois ratted us out in the last week of the transfer window and left us searching for a goalkeeper. Thanks, Courtois, you rat. But because of that, we've even with all of that, whoever scouted this deal should be sacked immediately because it was a horrible deal. Christoph Lolishon himself said that he didn't particularly rate Kepri. He's, he's a huge fan of Mendy as well on the other way around because of how tall he is, his wingspan. And that means he'll be commanding in the box. That means he'll actually go and collect corners, which is something Kepa hadn't done in the entirety of the 1920 season, which is another stat that I've heard recently. But it is about confidence and there is a good goalkeeper there. There's a reason why I tried to defend him for so long. I think if you put him in and Mendy, Competition is good and same way all across the team that we have right now the defense There's a lot of competition there Thiago Silva's got his place rock solid But I think next to him there'll be a lot of competition for his spots Midfield's been stacked for the last season or so so we already know the situation there and Giroud's Tammy and Werner fighting for that number one spot That's a very competitive side and I want to see that same competition in goal because I don't, I don't want to say Kepa's had it easy because he's still been dropped twice by Frank Lampard and it's, show, it's a good show of ruthlessness from him but I still think, regardless, if you're going to pick who's going to start, it is going to be Kepa because the price tag is still going to be hanging over their heads. And that's going to be a reason why they're going to push to try and make Kepa work. Even if he doesn't have a £70 million worthy season next season, it'll be good to ch for Chelsea to try and recoup some of the resale value. So, Kepa staying for one more season... I don't really mind because it can't get any worse. I think the only way is up for Kepa. We do need to see good performances like immediately straight off the bat. Otherwise, if he has another poor run, all that hate, all that confidence is just going to go straight onto his head and it's just going to make things worse. It's going to spiral out of control. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Second piece of news, Kai Havertz. This deal has been in progress for ages like it's literally like a 98 percent loading for like the last two weeks we know this deal's happening i think the fee's now been confirmed at 72 million plus add-ons we know the contract talks and everything the personal terms were agreed way before the transfer fee was even agreed and leverkusen gave us a deadline of august the 28th it is now september the 1st Leverkusen wanted him back for pre-season training. He hasn't shown up for pre-season training. And now Kai Havertz is off for international duty, which is kind of looking like holding the deal off for another 10 days at least. This one is taking ages, and thank God the transfer window is lasting till October, because if it was the case where it lasts in September like usual, we'd be so pissed right now. I think the amount of hate going Leverkusen's way would be a madness. But this is dragging and there's a couple reasons for why it's dragging. The first off is Leverkusen are trying to get a replacement in first. They're looking at Patrick Schick. I hope I pronounced that well. Yep, Patrick Schick from Roma. From Roma, he spent the season out on loan at Leipzig, so he looks to be staying in the Bundesliga. And I think it's a £27 million pound fee. £27 million euro pound fee. 27 million euro fee for Patrick Schick from Rome. I can't even believe I couldn't get that out. But yeah, I think another issue is that Sampdoria's previous club need to recoup some of the resale value as well. So that's also holding the deal up. And because of what's and because of this extra hold up, now Kai Havertz has gone off to international duty and he can't complete the media duties that Chelsea would want him to complete before completing this transfer because it's not the case of Thiago Silva where the media is only known about for a couple days and it's just been announced out of nothing. This one has been on the cards for months and they're not just going to have him announce it Cesc Fabregas style where he's just holding the shirt before a World Cup fixture. They're going to want to make this one look crisp, glossy and everything. So... I think it's just another waiting game for us. It's going to be... This is a really long deal. And all I can say is it's going to be a lot better in a couple weeks when this is all over and we can just relax. Because this isn't going to be a Manchester United and Sancho thing. This deal is done. Fabrizio Romano has been reporting for the last week just saying the words over and over again. This deal is done. They just need to announce it. So we don't need to worry too much. Nothing too much to worry about. 
Final piece of news, Inter Milan are interested in, in N'Golo Kante. You knew Antonio Conte was going to be interested in a couple Chelsea players when he went to Inter Milan because he's going to want players that understand and know his system. You know Conte, he knows his style of play and only his style of play. That's why we had that switch to 3-4-3 10 games in and it was a madness after that. But, Ngo but they're interested in N'Golo Kante. I'm hearing either 45 million to 50 million euros or a loan with an option to buy afterwards. I think both of those offers are ridiculous. I said all season, I don't get why people want to get rid of Kante. He's had one season below his already high standards and people think he isn't good enough. But games that we get battered in, like Bayern Munich at home, show exactly why we need N'Golo Kante in the team. We need someone with that stability and that balance. He's the closest thing we have to a proper DM that we have. He's still learning how to be a lone DM, but I've always thought he could play that position once he loses his legs and has to stay more stable in a position. I thought that McAlealy role would be perfect for him in his mid-30s. So selling N'Golo Kante is a silly idea to me. I don't think this is going to happen. I think it would go up there with the De Bruyne and Salah deals in the levels of stupidity if we got rid of N'Golo Kante because even in a stacked midfield he definitely starts and I think in a 4-2-3-1 you're going to need two proper DMs and I think N'Golo Kante is going to be one that you need in there so hopefully we don't sell Kante but guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my opinions let me know you guys want to see do a live who you want to see me do a live with on this channel let me know because we can set that up and it'll be jokes, it'll be fun and there's not really much else to talk about in the international break. So let me know guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G and we'll see you guys very very soon. Take care, up the trails.